Watch your corner, Sarmage. Look, I'm so excited to be back for another video. Your motivation guy is right here, bringing you yet another Fortnite analysis. And this time, we're gonna be going through exactly how FaZe does. FaZe Mega and OA Rogue Kane managed to absolutely crush the expectations in the most recent FNCS qualifiers. Man, this is so amazing. I'm really excited. You guys ready for this? Let's get this going. Let me ask you this, do you guys want to learn to play like the biggest pros in the Fortnite community? Then ProGuys.com is where you need to go. We've got master courses from some of the biggest pros like Clicks and Mongrel that will give you guys the knowledge and teach you the skills that you need to perform like one of the best. All you need to do to get started is click the link in the top right and then you're going to be on your way to improving faster than ever. Alright, so as the fight is just about to start, we see that our trio has just finished rotating into the circle and has already started boxing up as he is building a one by one. OA Row Kane spots an enemy trio boxing up right beside them and notices that one of the players in the trio has already been knocked by another team using a bow. So Row Kane instantly spots the opportunity to acquire some easy eliminations and begins just pushing that enemy team aggressively using the peace control meta to his advantage. As he gets next to the trios one by one, he starts trying to get some walls and pyramids into their box to really pressure them into fighting back. And as Rokane does this, his teammates follow behind him and they just start pressuring him also. Since the enemy trio, you know, has no cover from their builds, they get themselves eliminated pretty fast. And so what the enemy team should have tried in this scenario instead is really pick up their downed enemy and just rebox further away from Rokane's aggressive push. This way, they would have had the chance to revive the teammate and hopefully disengage from the fight. But all in all, OA Rokane did a great job being aware of his surroundings and spotting when the enemy team is in a weakened position and using that to his advantage. And everyone watching this should definitely try to just be more aware next time, you know, the game that you play, because I'm telling you, it's simple but effective. Also, always stay consistently practicing those peace control drills when you can, you know, just make sure it's frequent. So being able to pull out pyramids through windows to corner opponents doesn't really come naturally. So you need to ingrain it into your muscle memory by playing peace control creative maps, all right? Punch your crush on me, okay? It's time for the question of the day. Today, we wanna ask you who you think is going to win this season's FNCS. The competition is really starting to heat up, guys. So, you know, we wanna know what trail you think, you know, is has really what it takes to be all the way at the top of the finals. Let us know in the comments down below because you know we're already gonna check it out. All right, here we go, back to the video. All right, fight number two takes place towards the south of Boney Burbs, near one of the rusty bridges going over the river. So yet again, the enemy team is extremely far apart from each other, giving this trio a huge disadvantage. Dubs and Rokane immediately just start pressuring the enemy teammate who is closest to them, while Mega just tries to deal some damage long range to the other two enemies. Pretty quickly, Dubs and Rokane pull out the 2v1 against Brother Gavin, who was pretty determined to escape and regroup with his team. The lesson we learned here, guys, is always, you know, stay close to your trio to stop yourself from getting 2v1 and eliminated. You know, we see this far too much, and before you even realize the fight started, it's already over because you didn't have your teammates close by you to really pick you back up. And so once Brother Gavin is eliminated, the final two enemies stand the ground on top of their side of the bridge, shooting at Mega while he tries to build up towards them. And so since the enemy team is focused, tunneled, you know, visions on just spraying down Mega, like they aren't aware that Rokane is sneaking behind them, giving them an easy shotgun hit to the back of their heads, breaking his shield, making him box up. And so from that point, the fight is smooth sailing. Dubs and Mega can now easily get on like in the action without being sprayed. So two of them aggressively pushed a player who broke his shield, bagging another elimination. And finally, the last player remaining dies from falling off of his builds. So a lesson learned here is to always cover your sides before you start spraying somebody down. Because you can never really know if you're going to get flanked and really shot in the back. And so if you're constantly spraying, it's also, you know, even harder for you to hear the enemy's footsteps, which is why making sure you can't get shot in the back is really important. So all in all, guys, like this fight in particular was really extremely good for the Mega Dubs and Rokane because, you know, it's just pretty smooth sailing. Like they didn't get third party and it really stocked them up on more heals and materials for the rest of the game, which they won with 25 limbs. All right. So this fight takes place to the far east of Craggy Cliffs. 
when the trio spots an enemy team rotating into the zone from the bottom of a steep cliff. Since our trio already has the high ground, they make a move and just start holding the enemy team's movements while moving in towards them. And so a good tip when fighting is to always take advantage of the fact that they are in a weakened position. And so if they're forced to move in a certain direction, try your best to really hold and just make the enemy waste their resources to get into the zone. From there, it just makes it a hundred times easier to finish them off and really capture the elimination. So. As they're pushing towards them, picking off some damage with AR sprays, the trio is constantly watching their side, you know, making sure they aren't, you know, going to get third party or sniped with a bow. And so they already know that there are other people there, you know, watching them. So, you know, they built some walls to cover them from incoming arrows. And so when they finally get near to where the rotating enemy team is boxed up, OA, Rogue, Kane, and Doves sneak up closer while crouching to stop them from really hearing their footsteps. And so all at once, the trio starts spraying their ARs all at the same time, targeting the players through the wall, hoping for them to be weak from the storm and just get an easy knock. Unluckily though, this doesn't really work and the enemy starts building up. Unfortunately, OA, Rokane, Dubs, and Mega like are in a quite you know bad position since they are pressed up against the storm, which is still moving in, and they're also on low ground. And so at this point, they don't even know if the enemy is weak or not, but they push anyway. Honestly, you know, it would be a safer option to try and just disengage from this fight since they already know that there are other players further away with bows that might come and just third part of the fight. Nevertheless, OA Rokane rotates into the storm to regain high ground and looks for some shots on the enemy while, you know, people are still trying to just bow him from across the map. Eventually, another team comes in and tries to finish them off, but it just ends up in a nasty storm fight with Rokane, Dubs, and Mega just coming out on top, managing to survive the storm using Siphon Health. So the original team that they were trying to push and hold from zone ended up disengaging completely. You know, it really just goes to show you guys like how important it is to be able to multitask between different teams. And, you know, even though our trio didn't make some minor mistakes when, you know, when it comes to positioning and rotations during this fight, they still managed to come through and, you know, come out on top. All right, so bunch of crush on me. It's time for a recap. That's all for the fights that we're showing today. But, yo, we got to go over this again because we got to go over what we can take away from these clean fights. You know, phase dubs, phase mega, and OA Rokane did, all right? Here we go. Always try to stay aware of what's going on around you, especially what's going on with the enemy team, right? Like, we can't reiterate this enough, guys. Like, if you want to officially eliminate all the enemy players you fight, like, you have to find their weak spot. You know, whatever their weak spot is at that specific time, whether it's them being split up or whether they are weak, you know, healing or, you know, even if they are, you know, generally bad at building, like whatever it is, like you have to take advantage of it. Doing this will make your fight so smoother because you know what you're doing and why. Like you never want to just aimlessly fight random teams for just no good reason. All right. Number two, like always stick together. Like if you stick close to your teammates, you're just much less likely to get picked off in a 3v1 or 2v1. On the other hand, it's just much easier to fight an enemy who is by himself compared to when he's with his teams, you know, backing them up. All right, so if the enemy is tunnel vision on one of the players in your trio, try and go for an easy flank to really catch them off guard. And this way you can get some easy and quick damage on them and maybe even a knock. All right, coordinate your AR sprays. You know, what we mean by this is to plan your AR sprays before you start spraying. Simply just call out, you know, where the enemy is and do a countdown, you know, one, two, three. Like, you know, if you do this, you much more likely are to get high amounts of damage because it really just catches the enemy off guard and it wastes lots of the enemy's material. All right, guys, always stay consistent and sharp with your peace control. Like this one is pretty self-explanatory. You know, you're not going to be able to eliminate pro players close range without utilizing peace control drills. All right. You can do it. I believe in you. Let's go. Bunch of crush saw me. Okay, so that's it for today's in-game analysis of Dubs Mega and Rokane. You know, this trio has done some incredible things already. So, you know, who knows how far they're going to go, you know, in this FNCS. You know, they might even end up winning the entire thing. You never know. If you want to end up learning how to play like one of these pros, you can always check out the rest of our channel for more tips and more tricks. And if you found this video helpful, you already know what to do. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to connect with me, I'm right here. Connect with me on Instagram at your motivation guy. I'm the one that believes in you. I'm your number one fan. Don't give up. Don't surrender. I'll see you on the next one.